Well, a good evening to all the ladies and gentlemen out there. Yours truly, Blitzball Champ, is back with another video with some more Carolina Panthers talk here on the U to the Two. So, tonight, going to finish up with these final rounds of the draft. Of course, they were rounds four through seven. And we're going we're gonna to go over the players that were drafted in rounds four through seven. And just kind of wanted to give a quick recap and see how the, the rest of this draft went. I missed, uh, I missed pretty much uh, round five, six, and seven. But I was, I was around for um, round four. And then, you know, I just recently came back and looked over the rest of the rounds. And um, so, yeah, let's, let's take a look. And what the Carolina Panthers got in rounds four through seven, shall we? Let's do it. All right. So, starting off in round four, with the 126 overall pick, we ended up getting, uh, and I'm going to try to say this name correctly, is it Chuba Hubbard or Hubert or Chuba? Chuba Hubba. <laughs> Uh, Chuba Hubert, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, uh, running back out of Oklahoma State. So um, did a little bit of research, and this potentially could be a running back to compete with, you know, like the Trenton Cannon, the Rodney Smith, the Reggie Bonifine, that could compete with being somebody that could come in to take snaps and give Christian McCaffrey a rest during drives. This is good. This is actually good. He's six feet tall, 207 pounds, and apparently um, with his three-year college career, he's rushed for 3,459 yards and has 33 touchdowns, and apparently he's great in the receiving game. 53 receptions, 479 yards, three touchdowns, and apparently he's a he's a goal line threat as well. And looking at some of some tape on him, dude looks to be pretty elusive. He's got some great speed, great on cutbacks, and uh breaking tackles, getting through tackles. This might be a, a, a Christian McCaffrey 2.0, potentially. It sounds like he could come in and, and be successful. Like I mean, maybe might not be as, as fast as Christian McCaffrey, but it looks like he could legit come in, give Christian McCaffrey uh, some breaks during offensive drives, give, give this guy some handoffs, see what he can do. So this looks like a good pick. That could really be good competition to come in and, you know, chip in with some carries and take some of that load off of Christian McCaffrey, you know, and you got some competition there with, with Hubert, Trenton Cannon, Rodney Smith, uh, Reggie Bonifon, which I'm hoping Reggie Bonifon can come back healthy and, and really compete because we've seen flashes of Reggie Bonifon. You know, he's good when he's healthy. So, I mean, this is a good pick. This is some, Good running back competition. Of course, you know, we don't have Mike Davis anymore. He's with Atlanta. This is this is a good pick. This is good running back competition. You got another running back that can be used in the run game and in the receiving game. So, hey, Christian McCaffrey can do that. And so can this guy, Ch Chuba Hubert. So, I like the pick. I like the pick. You know, because we more and more, it gives the opportunity to take some of the load off of Christian McCaffrey. And I like this. I definitely like this. So good pick. Good pick. All right. We're moving on to round five. And we actually got two picks done in round five uh, with the 158 pick. We went with Davion, Dick, Davion Nixon, defensive tackle out of Iowa. So, more depth at defensive tackle. Uh, looked up a film on, on this guy, and 
You know, apparently last season had 13 and a half tackles for loss and five and a half sacks. And the dude had a pick six. He even had a pick six. So, has good hands, um, can fight through blocks. Apparently, he's he's known as a solid run stopper. And, um, you know, 6'3", 306 pounds. This, I mean, you know, he could come in on the rotation and, and do some damage. And apparently... He's got good hands. I mean, he got he got a pick six. So, I mean, apparently good speed as well. So, I mean, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if he can really be able to clog up the middle. But, hey, get, get him in the rotation along with Bravion Roy. This could work. Because, I mean, I think it's safe to say that pretty much the starters are probably going to be Derek Brown and Daquan Jones. But this... Adds to the rotation, Bravion Roy, and now you got Davion Nixon. This could definitely be a solid interior on the D-line. I like the pick. Definitely like the pick. Shows that he can play. I mean, 13 and a half tackles for loss. Good stuff. Five and a half sacks and a pick six last season. That's pretty solid. That's pretty, pretty solid for a defensive tackle. I like this pick. I definitely like this pick. Um, more depth on the D-line. You know, we get we got a good handful of edge rushers, but you know, we're loading up on the interior. We got another defensive tackle. Be good in the rotation, you know, with Daquan Jones, Bravion Roy, add in Davion Nixon. This is good. Good rotation, good depth at defensive tackle. I like it. I definitely like it. Um yeah, I, I honestly I can't complain about that. That's that's good depth. That's good depth. All right, and with the 166 pick in round five, Carolina picked up another cornerback, Keith Taylor, out of Washington. So, uh, pretty much one of the things that they say he's known for is his size. He's six three, so quite tall for a cornerback. So, I mean, and, ap and apparently he's known to excel at press coverage. So, apparently that's something that Phil Snow wants to take advantage of. And um, apparently it's, it was also noted in this report that Scott Fitterer was big on getting cornerbacks with a lot of wingspan and big. And it sounds like this is no different from that. So, I mean... He was coached up in the Senior Bowl, and it just looks like he's a familiar face to Coach Rule and, and Scott Fitterer that they're looking to take advantage of. Um, it's, a, it's another tall, it's another tall uh, cornerback, but I mean, hey, 6'3", 187 pounds. Depth at the position. We'll, we'll have to see how he does. I mean, definitely loaded up. Uh, this is the second cornerback taken in the draft by Carolina. So, I mean, we'll have to see how he does. See how he can contribute. And maybe with with good coaching, maybe he can turn into something. So, we'll, we'll see. But other than that, what stands out, according to the report, very tall and known for press coverage. So hey, maybe they could use that to the to the team's advantage on the defense. So hey, I'm not mad. Okay, moving on to round six, uh, with the 193rd pick, Carolina selected Deontay Brown, who's a guard from Alabama. Um. So apparently, looking at the report for him. This looks like a very solid pick. Six foot four, 350 pounds. And apparently, in his past three years, he never gave up a sack. In three years, did not give up a sack. Uh, that could 
could definitely come a long way as far as protection for for Sam Darnold. I mean, we got uh, Brady Christensen earlier. We got got a left left tackle. Now we're getting more into the interior of the offensive line by picking up picking up this big guard Deontay Brown, who's apparently never given up a sack in in three years, past three years. So I mean, and apparently they say that he's flexible. He can start on the left or the right side. So he could be a left guard or a right guard. Um, they noted that he went through suspension in the college playoffs of 2018-2019 because he failed a, a mandatory drug test. But, I mean, you can get past if he can get past that and, you know, bounce back from that going forward and not have that issue, this could potentially turn into a solid guard for Carolina. And, you know, Offensive line is something that they want to build up. And who knows? With his resume, maybe this dude could be the next up-and-coming Andrew Norwell. Because, you know, Andrew Norwell was keen with Carolina on not giving up a sack. You know, with his time in Carolina. So maybe this could be the next potential Andrew Norwell-like player. And I would have no complaints with that. So, uh... Kudos on the pick for this. Deontay Brown, this sounds like he could turn into a solid offensive lineman. Can play left and right guard and didn't give up a sack in the last three years. I say that's a win. I say that's a win. And also in round six, the second pick in round six, pick number 204, now, this was somebody that a lot of people were hyped for. A lot of fans, Carolina Panther fans, were hyped for getting. I've heard this name so many times. And sure enough, they, y'all's wish, have been granted. Because with this 204th pick, the Carolina Panthers selected wide receiver Shy Smith out of South Carolina. Man, I think ever since really I've been doing these videos like leading up to the draft, a lot of people were very high on Shy Smith. And sure enough, Carolina, we got him. So it's been said that apparently he could be the next up and coming Steve Smith. He could be the next Steve Smith. I mean, it's five nine hundred eight. 86 pounds, so similar, similar size. Um, apparently, uh, great hands, and apparently he's got got really great speed. Um, I don't know if maybe they might consider him also as a returner as well in the special teams, but. It looks like this guy could be the next up-and-coming Steve Smith. So we'll we'll see. We'll see how he does. Because, I mean, he's already a similar size to Steve Smith. And this is another weapon. This is another weapon on offense for, for Sam Darnold. And now you got you got a variety here here that really you never know who could break out. I mean, we've already seen what we can get production-wise out of our number one, DJ Moore, our number two, Robbie Anderson, who both, same season, had 1,000 yards receiving. So you already know you got good things from those two. But throw in Terrace Marshall Jr., throw in Shy Smith, and of course, you know, we, we got David Moore as well. I mean, we got a we got ourselves a young up and coming wide receiver core. And you already got, you know, good flashes from DJ Moore, who we've already picked up the fifth year option for, so we we, we at least got DJ Moore for another year after this season. You know, Robbie Anderson I don't know um, if they'll pay him, even if he has a great season this year. I hope he does. I mean, I wouldn't mind keeping the wide receiver core intact, especially if you got one that works. But this is looking to be a solid 
wide receiving core. I mean, hopefully maybe, I don't know if Omar Bayless or Keith Kirkwood can can be healthy. But, I mean, Robbie Anderson, those two, Terrace Marshall Jr., Shai Smith, DJ, DJ Moore, David Moore, Robbie Anderson. We got ourselves a good wide receiving core, and I, and I think some folks are going to really break out from this. I mean, you got a lot of hype from uh, Terrace Marshall Jr. You got more speed from Shai Smith. And like I said, a lot of fans were very high on Shai Smith. Well, y'all got your wish. So I, I, I hope it works out. Because I've been hearing a lot of things, a lot of good things about Shy Smith. Well, we got him. So, hey, y'all's wish has been granted. And then we got another pick um, in round six the for the 222nd pick. Went with a long snapper out of Alabama, Thomas Fletcher. Well, I mean... I know we've had J.J. Jansen for a long time, but, I mean, he is getting older. I believe he's 35 now. So, I mean, they're looking, they're looking out for their future, and they got themselves a replacement. That's pretty much the only thing I can see from this. Um, apparently, he was considered one of the best in college. So, I mean... You know, apparently J.J. Jansen makes $1.2 million a year with a cap hit of 2021, just under $1 million. So, I mean, Fletcher is a cheaper option, in the, you know, going forward. And, you know, we did sign J.J. Jansen for, for one more year, if I remember correctly. Um, so, I mean, hey, J.J. Jansen has been consistent with Carolina, been very consistent. But, you know, this is, this is a... a a plan for the future to be J.J. Jansen's replacement, this in Thomas Fletcher. So that's, that's pretty much all I really see out of this. And it looks like this guy could potentially pick up from where J.J. Jansen leaves off. And that's fine. That's, that's totally fine. I mean, that's, that's pretty much what this is, what this move is. So, hey, it is what it is. And then, uh... And the final round, round seven, with the 232nd overall pick, Carolina got themselves another defensive tackle from Kentucky, Phil Hoskins. So, uh, more, more depth at the interior, defensive tackle. Um, six foot five, 313 pounds, and has an 83 and 38 inch wingspan. Jeez. Um, apparently, uh, has the potential, I mean, he's dealt with injury and such, but apparently he seems to be known to be able to plug up the middle and can be a rotational player. So, hey, um, and apparently, uh, Matt Rule has, um, you know, being that he's given giving folks a second chance. I mean, look at Robbie Anderson, who played at Temple. So, I mean, another rotational defensive tackle adds more depth to the D-line. You know, so work in Bravion Roy. Um, they, uh, what was it? Davion Nixon. And then now you got Phil Hoskins. You know, and they can rotate with Derrick Brown and Daquan Jones. You know, that's that's good rotation. That's good, solid rotation. And you could swap one out, you know. Maybe take out Derrick Brown for for a few snaps. Get get uh, Davion Nixon in there. Take out Daquan Jones for a few snaps. Get Phil Hoskins in there. You know, get Bravion Roy. I mean, you, you, got, you, got some, you got some depth there. You got some depth. So it'll be interesting and even in the in the competition position battles at DT. I mean 
might not be able to keep everybody, but but you got some competition there, and they have the opportunity, especially you know as they go through preseason and start to whittle down to the fifty three man roster. I mean, have a chance to you know see what what who can blow up from the defensive tackle position. So this is more depth. And and those are your picks. Those are your picks uh, for the rounds four through seven for the Carolina Panthers. So um, overall, this was a pretty interesting but pretty good draft. I think overall my only complaint, like looking through everything, my only my only two complaints, I have two, my only two complaints, I feel like we traded back a whole lot, but this is what Mr. Scott Fitterer is known for, the trade back king, and he's had success with it back in Seattle. So that's, I, I, that is just one thing that we just, we gotta, we gotta trust the process. Got to trust the process. And two, we didn't get a safety. We didn't get a safety. I was kind of hoping that we got a safety. That that was something I was really hoping. Because I was thinking maybe we're, we were going to get Jamar Williams. But that didn't happen. But we didn't get a safety. So, I mean... I know the whole idea of, you know, putting Jeremy Chen back at safety. And I know we got, you know, Sam Franklin ha has some experience. And, you know, Kenny Robinson, who we couldn't really get the ball going because of, of injury. I mean, and then, of course, we do have Justin Burris. So, I mean, we're potentially looking at Justin Burris, Jeremy Chen as starting safeties. But, um, I mean, we'll see. You know, maybe they'll continue to develop um, Sam Franklin. I know Sean Chandler is on here. He's got a little bit of experience. Um, but, I mean, hey, I mean, it just might be one of those things where some of the safeties we have that will just continue to develop, and we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But, um I was really hoping that we would get a safety in this draft, but I mean, we'll we'll see what happens. But um, but yeah, that concludes the um twenty twenty one NFL draft for uh, the Carolina Panthers. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they uh balance out uh how they'll pay their drafts, their drafted players. And also, I don't know what the cap situation looks like, What if they may try to make another move in free agency or so. But, um, you know, just looking looking at what we have, I, th I think Carolina still did good in this draft. They addressed a lot of needs. They definitely addressed a lot of needs. So, I mean, just have to see how the pieces are put in put together, you know, once they get training camps up and going, preseason, and we really get to see how everything comes together on the field, we'll see what happens. You know, they went out, they got Sam Darnold some, some protection. You know, hopefully we end up with a solid offensive line that can really be consistent, protect Sam Darnold. Open up some holes for uh, the running backs. And the wide receiver can take advantage. Get open. And, you know, we got a wide receiving core. A young wide receiving core. You know, more has been added on to that. So, I mean, you know, still did well in the free agency. So, I mean, I'm excited. I don't know about y'all. I'm excited. I know a lot has happened in this draft that a lot didn't expect. I know there were some frustrations. I know there were some disappointments. But you know what? I think Coach Rule and Scott Fitterer did their best. There was a lot of trade backs, but they still addressed key needs. 
So, I mean, only thing we could do is wait and see what happens. And I know a lot of people still hating on the fact that we have Sam Darnold, which we did pick up the fifth year option. Still a lot of people are still reaching for the idea of Deshaun Watson, which honestly, like I said, folks really need to let that go. Because I honestly doubt that that's going to happen. And just accept the fact we have Sam Darnold. That's what, that's what we're going with. So we might as well get used to it and get ready to deal with the pros and cons of it and do our best as fans to support him. He's on Because he's on the team now. He's on the team now. Like it or not, he's our quarterback. They are... Carolina is well invested in him to the point where we didn't take Justin Fields when we could have. We took up the fifth-year option for to keep Sam Darnold for at least two years. You know, and we even traded to get Sam Darnold. You know, even though we originally we tried to get uh, um, Matthew Stafford, didn't didn't work out. But look. He's coming from a Jets team that had the league's near worst offensive line, worst coaches by, by record, and didn't really have consistent high impact players. I mean, they didn't even have any pro bowlers. Last time I checked, they didn't even have any pro bowlers. So Sam Darnold is coming into a better situation to a better team with weapons, better weapons, and we're trying to surround him with the protection he needs. The rest is the rest is on him because he still has to perform. I'm not I'm not looking I'm not taking that out of consideration. Sam Darnold still has to perform as he still has to do his part. But I think now he can have some confidence and can play with confidence knowing that the team is trying to protect him and get the man some weapons. So really, there should be no excuses, but we have to see how it plays out. You know, we can't jump to such heavy conclusions. He's on a new team. We can't jump to such negative conclusions with even before a snap has been made on this new team. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I know everybody has their reservations, their opinions, their thoughts about Sam Darnold. And I know how everything with Teddy Bridgewater didn't go as well as we hoped for, but let's at least give him the same benefit of the doubt that we gave Teddy Bridgewater. And let's see what happens from the start of that first snap. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And from, from one Panther fan to many other Panther fans. He's our quarterback. Like it or not, he's our quarterback. Accept it. And hope for the best. That's all we can do. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, the usual. Click the notification bell so you don't miss any video. And thank y'all so much. Um, I hope y'all, I hope y'all overall enjoyed the draft. Um, let me know what y'all think. Let me know what y'all think about the these uh, remaining picks, uh, four through seven. Let me know what you thought of the draft in general. Um, those that did mock drafts, was this pretty close? Like, did you get a lot of them right? What'd you think? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. This is Blitzball Champ, Jason Ingram, signing off. Hope everybody has a blessed weekend and a blessed week upcoming. And I will see y'all soon. Salute.